What's going on, everyone? Welcome to part two of our Keyshot Essential series. My name's Kareem Merchant, and today I'll be showing you how to easily navigate the interface and customize your Keyshot workspaces. If you're watching this video, you've most likely just started using Keyshot. And as with all new programs, it's easy to become overwhelmed by the plethora of controls and options available. Luckily, Keyshot has a simple, easy to use interface, which I'm going to help walk you through. When opening Keyshot, the first screen you'll see is the welcome window, where you'll be able to access quick links to online content. Under the learning section, which is open now, you can find our latest quick tips and tutorials, and under the what's new section, you'll be able to stay informed about the latest Keyshot features. The welcome window is also where you'll find preloaded demo scenes and recent projects if you have any. At the bottom of the window, you can find links to our social media platforms, blog, and our forums where you can post projects and get feedback from the Keyshot community. To get started, close the welcome window by hitting the hotkey W or clicking on the red X at the top of the window. Navigate to the workspace drop-down menu and select the default workspace to bring up all relevant windows. These windows will likely be the ones you end up using the most. In this menu, you can also select from a series of other preset workspaces, which can be used to streamline different parts of your workflow. From the top down, we have our startup workspace, which we just left and toggled to default. We are currently in the default workspace, which gives us access to the most commonly used panels in Keyshot, and if you ever accidentally close or relocate a panel and want to revert back to the default workspace, simply click on the default option in the dropdown. Next is the compact workspace. This removes the bottom toolbar and library panel when you want to maximize your real-time view or focus on scene adjustments. Below that, we have a material editing layout and an environment editing layout that brings each respective tab out as its own panel. Another unique element of this dropdown is the ability for advanced users to save custom workspaces for future use and at the bottom, set your desired theme preferences. I prefer to work with a dark theme, which you can see here. In the center of the screen, we have our real-time view. This is where you can see and manipulate your model once it's imported into Keyshot. It's also where you'll apply materials, lighting, environments, and backgrounds through a simple drag and drop workflow from the library panel. The library panel on the left contains pre-made materials, color options, textures, lighting environments, and backplates that you can drag and drop into your scenes. You can also create collections of your favorite assets using the favorites tab and add basic geometry through the models tab. On the right, we have the project panel where you can find the scene tab that shows basic information of all parts and models that populate your scene. This tab's displayed information is imported from the CAD data of the model you are importing. The project panel also contains the material tab, which lets you control your material applications. The environment tab that lets you control your HDRI lighting environments. The lighting tab that allows you to control how light is being calculated. The camera tab where you can manage and adjust your cameras. And finally, the image tab, which allows you to set your resolution, your aspect ratio, and make image adjustments such as exposure and contrast. You can also add some basic effects such as bloom and vignette. Along the top, you'll find the ribbon, which contains commonly used settings, tools, and commands. From here, you can choose between CPU and GPU render modes, enable the denoise function, dictate the number of cores used by Keyshot, and pause the real-time view. By adjusting your core usage in the ribbon, you can reduce the load placed on your computer and open up cores to process other tasks you may be working on simultaneously. Along the bottom toolbar, you'll find buttons that allow you to import models, show and hide the library and project panels, and open the animation timeline. If you have the Pro version, you can open the XR dialog from here, and if you've purchased KeyVR, you can open that from the toolbar as well. The last button on the toolbar will toggle the Render Output window, which you'll use when you're ready to render out your final images. Located on the far left of the toolbar, you can find the Cloud Library icon. By clicking this button, you'll be able to download many more materials, environments, backplates, and textures, plus 3D models to practice with or populate your scenes. Any assets downloaded from the cloud will be automatically added to the library and can be found in the download directory of each tab. Keyshot's cloud library is regularly updated, so if you're looking for the latest assets available, simply use the search filter to the right of the search bar and filter based on your desired parameters. 
The interface is also entirely customizable. Panels and tabs can be moved around and docked where preferred, or they can float freely. By right-clicking the toolbar area, you can set icon size and toggle text on and off. By doing the same in the ribbon area, you can toggle off unused icons as well as hide text. If you'd like to save a layout you've created, go to the Workspace drop-down menu, select Add, and name your workspace. The new workspace can now be easily accessed from the drop-down menu at any time. Keyshot has a long list of shortcuts built in to help speed up your workflow, which you can see by opening the shortcut list using the hotkey K. These shortcuts can be customized by opening the edit menu, selecting preferences, and choosing hotkeys from the list. This preference menu is also where you'll be able to manage interface options, file paths, plugins, and import settings. Once you're ready to import a model into your scene, you can either use the import button at the bottom of the toolbar or use the control I shortcut to select your file. If you're curious about which formats Keyshot supports, click on the format dropdown on the bottom right to see the entire list. Once open, an import dialog will allow you to adjust a few settings that will vary based on file type. Here you can also select the enable quick import box to save your settings for future imports and skip the dialog box entirely. When your desired adjustments have been made, select Import to populate your scene. Lastly, to navigate around your model in the real-time view, you can left-click and drag to move the camera around the model, scroll to dolly in and out, and click the scroll wheel and drag to pan around your scene. If you do not have a scroll wheel, you can always move around your scene by toggling between tumble, pan, and dolly using the ribbon at the top. Thanks for watching the second part of our Keyshot Essential series. In part three, we'll be exploring the Keyshot material library and learning how to start customizing your materials. Stay tuned for more Essential series releases. And as always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and share with your friends.